I had so much fun yesterday. I was working the sawmill all day and I decided to do a video, which I'll be showing you here in a minute. And Kyle decided to come up and give me a hand doing the milling and uh, we really had a lot of fun. He's a professional videographer and sometimes he likes to help me out. Um, but we kind of talked a little bit about putting together this video in more of a production manner. So I took some of the video footage, he took my camera and took, did some of the footage, so it's kind of a, a mix up of both of us using it. But in the end, I put together what I thought the story should be, and then I gave him the exact same footage and I watched him edit. He spent probably three hours last night and he put together his version of the exact same story. So it's a little bit longer video, uh, but I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, we milled up the redwood log and ultimately ended up milling a beautiful slab. And um, Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Two different videos, same story, told differently by two different people. setting up the Lucas mill today. My good friend Kyle. Say hi Kyle. Howdy. We've got a log that's got a taper to it which is often the case. So this side is larger than that side. The way I set this up to make it work is I balance out the height difference by putting one side up a little bit and this side's solid on the ground. Now I've got to move this over a little bit so that it'll cut according to the smallest circle all the way through. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, let's go over to this side. Okay, come over here. All right, there's the pith of the tree, which is not the exact center. All right, what I'm doing is I'm roughing in the idea of what a circle is on this piece of wood. And I'm pretty close, a little bit little bit off but that's about as close as I can get so if I take this circle and I relocate it to that side now I don't normally do this I just estimate but this gives you a better idea of how to set the log up for milling so now let's go over to the other side because the, the the best we can do on milling is to box off the smallest side of the log the other side is a lot bigger so unless I'm cutting tapered boards that are thicker on one end and thinner on the other end you have to work with the constraints of the smallest piece of your log. Over on this side, I can come over here, and the pith looks like it's right in the dead center of this one. A nope, little bit low. Over there. So this is approximately the same diameter as the other end of the tree. So when I'm setting this up for a parallel, I want it to be this much further over on that side than that one. So I don't want the edge of the log to run parallel with the rail. Because if I do, I'll get to the end and I'll be real thick on one side and real thin on the other side. I want to balance out the whole log. Does that make sense? I wedged the back side of the log so it would not move. And I moved it over just a bit and I put an approximation mark on the ground where I thought it should be. So I think it's got to come about two more inches. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, man. So you can move the log now. And when you're milling, ideally you want it as stable as possible. So you can put wedges, you can cut wedges and shove them in. That's the best way to do it. Because uh, you don't want this thing moving while you're you're milling. So we set it up. The parallel between these 
it is just a little bit more on this side than that side so I hope we got it right I think we're pretty damn close also when you have to put uh, risers up underneath to bring one up try to avoid having stuff sticking out where you're gonna trip try to keep your walk zone clear because you're gonna... come on Kyle are you on the level yeah like a 16th so which side goes up this side? This side? 16. Alright, you look at it. We good? One, one more. That's it. Okay, so the other side's not quite level. So I gotta bring this side up just a little bit. So you dig that out, move that back. I'll lift it up and we'll just. So we can get that side level, we get both sides level, then the, the mill runs a lot smoother and it's running parallel and it's not going to be dipping down. Setting up the mill doesn't take that long, but it's usually half an hour to an hour depending upon the terrain that you're on. And I just happen to be on some pretty unlevel terrain. So I'll lift up on it a little bit, shove that under there a little deeper, a little bit more. Let's go see if that's level. Pretty close, just a hair more. Okay. Now the side to side on this isn't isn't as important. It's it's the parallel from this rail to this rail. Now that I've got two of the extensions on, I don't need any more, but I can make this uh, this thing up to 24 feet long. Maximum mill length that I've been able to do is just about, I've done 22 foot logs, but it's real tight turning the blade. So comfortable 20 foot. Always check the teeth. Make sure you're not missing any. There's only five of them. Still reasonably sharp. It's got a sharpening jig that I can put on there as well. Uh, don't overdo it on the video, man. You do these really long, drawn-out videos. When it comes to editing, it's like, you'll give me five minutes of video and I'll take 10 seconds of it. <laughs> cut. All right, cut. Okay, the next thing you gotta do is you gotta decide what you're gonna be cutting out of the log. And that's important because to get the optimum grain configuration, Ideally, you want to do as much quarter sawn as you, as you can. So if you've got concentric circles this way and a log, you want to cut it so that the grain goes across the face of the board. So I would cut a piece of wood out like this. So as the grain is up here, you're going to get all the, the, the circles this way. So it's smarter to cut deep first and uh, wide this direction. So I'd cut the blade like this and then cut it so I'll go into it. So each of the boards will have more quarter sawn grain pattern as opposed to flat sawn. So what are we gonna cut out of this, Kyle? What should we cut? Big slabs. No. No, it's a construction lumber. Should this we cut what should we cut one by eights now? Yeah, some siding. Alright, let's do one by eights. Should we do three quarter by eights? We'll get more. Yeah, three quarters. Three quarters by eights? Yeah. Alright. So the saw blade now is running parallel, or horizontal. And the, next, the vertical cut is going to be the 8 inches deep. So right now I'll, I'll zero it out, and I'm going to drop this down 8 inches, and then I'll come in from the, this other adjustment to the 3 quarters.
is what we got out of that one log. And that's what I got out of the big log. And this was over there. And there's still a little bit left. And I'm down at the bottom of the of the nail. So what I gotta do is I've gotta pull that out and put a couple of uh, risers underneath it and bring that up and then keep going and get the uh, I can get about maybe four more two by sixes. Okay, I'm done for the day. I used the uh, planer blade on there to smooth it out. It's a full three inches thick by about 26 inches wide and it narrows down to about 22 inches wide. And I ran the planer blade so it's pretty smooth. It could still stand, you know, finish sanding, but it's a, a good percentage of it is done. Beautiful piece of wood. First $700 takes it. Sold. What are you going to make it of it? Table. Mm -hmm. table. Setting up the mill doesn't take that long, but it's usually half an hour to an hour, depending upon the terrain that you're on. And I just happen to be on some pretty unlevel terrain. So I'll lift up on it a little bit, shove that under there a little deeper. Also, when you have to put uh, risers up underneath to bring one up, try to avoid having stuff sticking out where you're gonna trip. Try to keep your walk zone clear, because you're gonna be building up, building up, building up and periodically pull out some of the sawdust. Yeah, like a sixteenth. And one more. That's it. Okay, so the other side's not quite level. So I gotta bring this side up just a little bit. So you dig that out, move that back. I'll lift it up and we'll just see if we can get that side level. We'll get both sides level. Then the, the mill runs a lot smoother and it's running parallel and it's not going to be dipping down. Pretty close, just a hair more. Okay, let's see what we got. Nice! What I'm doing is I'm roughing in the idea of what a circle is on this piece of wood. And I'm pretty close, a little bit, a little bit off, but that's about as close as I can get. So if I take this circle and I relocate it to that side. Now, I don't normally do this. I just estimate, but this gives you a better idea of how to set the log up for milling. So now let's go over to the other side, because the, the, the best we can do on milling is to box off the smallest side of the log. The other side's a lot bigger. So unless I'm cutting tapered boards that are thicker on one end and thinner on the other end, you have to work with the constraints of the smallest piece. So this is approximately the same diameter as the other end of the tree. So when I'm setting this up for a parallel, I want it to be this much further over on that side than that one. So I don't want the edge of the log to run parallel with the rail. 
because if I do, I'll get to the end and I'll be real thick on one side and real thin on the other side. I want to balance out the whole log. Does that make sense? So you can move the log now. And when you're milling, ideally you want it as stable as possible. So you can put wedges, you can cut wedges and shove them in. That's the best way to do it. Because uh, you don't want this thing moving while you're, you're milling. Always check the teeth. Make sure you're not missing any. There's only five of them. Okay, the next thing you gotta do is you gotta decide what you're gonna be cutting out of the log. And that's important because to get the optimum grain configuration, ideally you wanna do as much quarter sawn as you, as you can. So if you've got concentric circles this way and a log, you wanna cut it so that the grain goes across the face of the board. So I would cut a piece of wood out like this. So as the grain is up here, you're gonna get all the, the, the circles this way. So it's smarter to cut deep first and uh, wide this direction. So I'd cut the blade like this and then cut it so I'll go into it. So each of the boards will have more quarter sawn grain pattern as opposed to flat sawn grain pattern, which I have more of a tendency to warp. And what are we gonna cut out of this, Kyle? What should we cut? Big slabs. No. Should we cut one by eights now? Yeah, some siding. No. Should we do three quarter by eights? We'll get more. Yeah, three quarters. Three quarters by eights? Yeah. All right. The vertical cut is going to be the eight inches deep. So right now, I'll, I'll zero it out. And I'm going to drop this down eight inches. And then I'll come in from the, this other adjustment to the three quarters. Piece of wood, first seven hundred dollars takes it. Sold. What are you gonna make out of it? Table. That would be a nice table. You know what you could do with this? Is you could run a straight edge all the way down, and then cut it in half. No. This is what we got out of that one log. And that's what I got out of the big log. Don't overdo it on the video, man. You do these really long, drawn-out videos. When it comes to editing, it's like, you'll give me five minutes of video and I'll take 10 seconds of it. <laughs>